one thing about New York is that there's never any privacy. There's never a moment where you're actually alone. Not including the, the, the surveillance and the technology. Just away from everybody else. It's so rare and hard to find a place just to sit down. I mean, take for instance this this fence that's built here. You see how it's curved out to allow no no space to sit? So so no one will sit on your wall. That's why they designed it this way. And here's another one in another building. Same thing, curved thing, to make sure that no one will be able to have a seat for a moment and and you know and catch their breath or or whatever, you know? And it's like this everywhere. Everything locked and gated and fenced and you know, barbed wire and fences you can't climb over. This is a church, by the way, here. This one with the 12-foot fence with the barbed wire. And, uh, it's... It's really difficult. I used to find this place wonderful and amazing. And now it's like a never-ending nightmare. And... You know, we're living in Bushwick, where they've tripled the rents and tripled the property value and driven out the poor, and, you know, for what? So they can all get money. In the 70s, Bushwick was, was flattened like the Bronx. It was burned out, boarded up, fire hydrants running, drug dealers, prostitution, poor people, all done by the banks and investors because they were getting tax write-offs for for properties that were being warehoused and uh, you know so now they've flipped the the coin and and they're coming back and every single vacant lot and boarded up house has been purchased and turned into expensive housing and you know I have no resources. I have nothing. I'm trying to get my disability benefits. I've been fighting now for four years to get them. And, you know, the, the constant moving, the, the displacement, and the, 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 the insanity of our lives. We never had these problems before. I, I never had these problems. Wherever I lived, I lived for six, seven years about, and then I would move for whatever reason. Almost every time. And, and you know, now, <laughs> I'm lucky if I get him. We haven't even been here a month. It's, it's, you know, so why don't I pack up and, and go to the country, right, with no license, no car, no money, no medication, no no program. You know, I'm on medicine that I have to take every day. Uh, stupidly, I got on this stuff 20 years ago, and you know, there's all kinds of people who say, "Oh yes, medication-assisted treatment is perfectly okay," and none of that. But I get uh, I get treated like uh, garbage because. I listened to this social worker who told me how my life would change for the better and you know, look at this man, the stress is, is, is killing me and I'm trying to find a way to be calm and try to find a way to heal and try to find a way to eat right and, and you can't do that when you're living in a suitcase. You don't know where anything is, you just, you know, listen, I know I complain a lot. And I, I don't mean to just complain all the time, um, but I got a lot to complain about, you know? I have a lot to be thankful for, and I spend a lot of time thinking about that and going through the list of, of blessings that I do have, you know? And there are times when even those things are... are you know, the smallest things. It's, and I don't understand why we have to suffer so much in this life. You know? Uh, but I guess that's... 
the way it is, you know? Suffer and suffer and suffer and try to be more compassionate and try to be more giving of yourself and more helpful and, and you know, regardless of, of your health, regardless of your... Why can't I just get a regular, like, a regular... You know, it's like constant assault. I, I wish I had the resources, the wherewithal, and the ability to go somewhere and just be left alone. You know? Petra and I never had a fight. Really, we didn't fight about anything until these people started banging on us. And even then, it took quite some time before we started turning on each other from the stress and the, the you know, it's just, uh, this has all been caused by these people. All the discord in our lives has basically been caused by these people, you know? We know how to struggle, we know how to get by with very little, we know how to, you know, I really don't know anymore. I'm just like, you know, turn my life over to God. I've been saying this every day, you know. Please, Lord, please come into my life and show me and help me and give me strength. And so, facing these challenges and facing these, you know, what do you do, man? Somebody texted me the other day and telling me they're thinking about killing themselves because they can't take it anymore. And I'm like, thinking to myself, that's exactly how I feel. What am I going to tell this person? You know? You know? I can't. I can barely find a reason to go on myself, let alone encourage somebody else to continue suffering. What do you do? I mean, I can't tell somebody to go kill yourself. It's not right. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, now I'm gonna go into the supermarket and get some cat food. Thanks for watching. God bless you all.